Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the 2014 Mitsubishi Mirage, the cheapest and simplest car in America. For $12,995, buyers get four doors, a steering wheel, some seats, and a thin coat of pink paint. Now, I'm sure you're asking right now, Nick, why would I pay money for that pink eye on wheels? And let me quickly reassure you, it's not as bad as it seems. For that money, yes, you do have to be seen driving around in a pink teardrop made in Thailand, but you're also treated to some simply brutal three-cylinder acceleration. Oh, go, bees! Go! Yes, the 1.2-liter three-cylinder under the hood only makes 77 ponies. What it lacks in pure power, however, it easily makes up for with noise and vibrations. And can you really put a price on that? Perhaps I'm not being entirely fair to this little thing. If someone wants very, very simple three-cylinder transportation, then the Mirage is perfectly fine. What if though you want to keep with a three-cylinder motif but want something a bit more complex? Then you're going to want this, the 2015 BMW i8. And with its futuristic aesthetics and insane technology, it might be the most sophisticated car on the road today. Before we get to the driving dynamics, however, we have much to discuss. Let's start with the exterior. The whole thing has been carved from carbon fiber, and underneath is an aluminum frame. The entire design architecture BMW calls life drive. That's because the cabin, the living bits, are sandwiched on either end by two power plants, making this an all-wheel drive plug-in hybrid sports car. In the mid-rear, we have a turbocharged three-cylinder gasoline engine and a six-speed automatic transmission. And under here, BMW claims there's an electric motor mated to a two-speed automatic transmission. But I don't really know because the hood's bolted shut. The whole car is a study in attention to detail. The first time I saw the i8, I wondered if I had just woken up from a 50-year coma. Take the open spaces between the sloping roof and the rear quarter panels, for example, which allow air to flow over the taillights. The styling isn't just stunning, it also improves aerodynamics. Even the tires were painstakingly designed. BMW wanted to ensure they were narrow and of low rolling resistance for efficiency, but also sticky enough to provide traction during track day driving. And rather than regular doors, BMW fitted gull wings, which from the front make it look a bit like the Karate Kid. Sure, they're cool, but they make getting in and out a bit difficult. Once you've clumsily made your way past the doors and into the cabin, you're treated to the life bit of the life drive design architecture. In here, as you can see, we have a swoopier version of a modern BMW interior, with a large infotainment screen jutting out of the dash. Now, while the interior bits are interesting, like the blue seat belts, it's the bits about the i8 you can't see that set it apart from the rest of the Bimmer lineup. Here, for example, underneath the carbon fiber shell where a traditional drive shaft might be is a sealed and cooled 7.1 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, geez, the i8 sounds very complicated, just wait. You haven't seen anything yet. Back behind my head somewhere is that three-cylinder, 1.5-liter turbocharged engine that produces 228 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. And both of that pint-sized little powerhouse are both a motor generator and a six-speed automatic transmission, which routes all that energy down to the rear wheels. Up front, complementing the three-cylinder is that mystery electric motor and two-speed automatic transmission. At top tilt, the motor makes 129 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. With its gas engine, electric motor, battery pack, and two transmissions, the BMW i8 is capable of some serious German magic. The BMW i8 has four drive modes. Not only that, it can be powered at any given moment by the front wheels, the rear wheels, or all four wheels at the same time. In e-drive mode, for example, the gasoline engine remains at rest, transforming the car into a front-wheel drive EV. Pop it into sport mode, like right there, and the instrument cluster turns bright orange. The chassis is stiffened, the steering directness is perfected, the shift times are quickened, and e-boost is maximized. 
And what's E-Boost? Good question. Remember that motor generator strapped to the three-cylinder? Well, when I put the throttle down there, it literally flops over from accessory mode to add extra oomph to that little engine, filling out mid-range torque until the turbocharger kicks in. When all the bits are spinning together, the i8 produces 357 horsepower and 420 torques, which is good for a 0 to 60 sprint of 4.2 seconds. I usually hate the feeling of electric power steering. It's usually very numb and dead. This one, however, is very good indeed. It gives lots of feedback. Yes, there is a bit of understeer at higher speeds, but it is so precise and you know exactly what the wheels are doing. It's very good. And look how much the car is doing right now. As I come into a corner and I let off and it starts braking in the front, and then we start powering the rear again, power at all four wheels, come in braking with the front. I can't believe this thing hasn't torn itself in half yet. Good Lord, power on all four wheels, power in the rear, and then the handling. Oh my word, the handling. The i8 has the lowest center of gravity of any modern BMW, you can absolutely tell. It is very flat and very planted through the corners. It's not just a tech car, this is a driver's car too. The i8 wants to be driven hard. It loves it. It's like a border collie. It's fine lounging around, but it's most at home and happiest at full tilt with 1,000 tasks to perform at once. Of all the fantastic features of the i8, perhaps the best bit is the sound. You've got the roar of the beefy three-cylinder behind you and the symphonic whines of two electric motors. It doesn't sound like you're driving a modern sports car, but rather one of those cars from the Jetsons. It's absolutely intoxicating. It's this, it's this sound that the new F1 cars should make. As wonderful as that sound is, I have some bad news. It's completely fake. Yes, that's the sound of the three-cylinder, but not the one in the car. BMW admitted to me it's actually the sound of one of those same three-cylinders in a sound booth. Worse yet, the engine sounds you hear piped through a speaker in the cabin don't even correspond to the revs of the engine on board, but rather to throttle position. I have some more bad news. BMW estimates the i8 on the European drive cycle to achieve 94 mpge, which is very good. Right now though, we're getting 23.8, which isn't very good at all. Heck, that's not even good for a seven-seater family SUV. So what should we make of the i8 then? It's expensive, hard to get in and out of, and not terribly efficient. Worrying about those things, I wager, misses the point. Not one feature, be it the driving dynamics, the complex powertrain, the stunning body, or the eco-friendly, lightweight construction alone that defines the i8. It's the whole package. It's all of the bits that combine together make the i8 what it is. BMW could have just as easily built a cool looking plug-in hybrid coupe or a carbon fiber supercar and called it a day. But no, instead they looked to the future and did it all. So no, the i8 isn't perfect. It never could have been. It's a daring step into the future where cars in the 21st century will inevitably go and have to be to survive.